This video introduces the idea of finding the area between two curves. Let's start with some review. In Calculus 1, you approximated the area between a curve and the x-axis by dividing it up into tall skinny rectangles. You represented the width of one of these rectangles using the symbols delta x. Here delta x means a small distance along the x-axis or a small change in x values. You picked out an x value called a sample point from each of these little subintervals along the x-axis. One sample point for each rectangle. The sample point on the x-axis for rectangle number i is denoted by xi star. You use these sample points and the function f to figure out the height of each rectangle. The height of rectangle number i is given by the function's value on the sample point, f of xi star. From this, you calculated the area of each rectangle. The area of a rectangle is base times height. So the area of the first rectangle is delta x times f of x1 star. The area of the second rectangle is delta x times f of x2 star. And the area of rectangle number i is going to be its base, delta x, times its height, f of x i star, and so on. If there are n rectangles, then the last rectangle will have base delta x and height f of x n star. So the approximate area under the curve is given by adding up all these areas of all these rectangles. In sigma notation, this can be written as sigma, the sum, from i equals 1 to n, the number of rectangles, of the area of the i-th rectangle, delta x times f of x i star. The exact area is then given by the limit of these approximating areas as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. That's the limit as n goes to infinity of this Riemann sum of areas. A limit of a Riemann sum like this is by definition an integral. So we can rewrite this using the integral sign as the integral of f of x dx. And the bounds of integration here, based on our picture, are from x equals a to x equals b. Notice that when we convert the limit of a Riemann sum to integral notation, the sample points x sub i star just become our variable x, and the delta x becomes our dx. Now that we've reviewed these ideas of calculating the area under a curve, we're going to use these same ideas to calculate the area between two curves. To compute the area between two curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, in between the x values of a and b, we can again divide up the region into tall skinny rectangles, as shown in this picture. Once again, let's let delta x be the width of each rectangle, and let's let xi star represent a sample point in the ith interval. So x sub i star is a point on the x-axis that lives in the rectangle number i. Now if we want to compute the area of one of these tall skinny rectangles, as always, the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. The base of any of these rectangles is given by delta x, but the height is different for each rectangle. If I focus on, in on rectangle number i, I'll assume this is rectangle number i right here. It stretches all the way up to f of the sample point, f of x sub i star, and it stretches all the way down to g of that x sub i star. So the height of that rectangle is the gap between f of x and g of x at that sample point. In other words, it's the difference f of x sub i star 
minus g of x sub i star. Now that we have an expression for the area of one of these rectangles, we can add up all those areas as before to get an expression for the approximate area between the curves. It's just the sum of these areas. And as before, we can get the exact area by making these rectangles skinnier and skinnier by taking more of them. We take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of this Riemann sum. And as always, the limit of a Riemann sum is given by the integral. Where the x sub i stars, the sample points just become our variable x, and the delta x becomes our dx. Let's put in our bounds of integration. We're told that x goes between a and b, and we have an expression for the area between our two curves. Actually, this formula only works if f of x is greater than or equal to g of x on the interval from a to b. That inequality guarantees that this expression, f of x i star minus g of x i star, will be a positive number. We want a positive height for our rectangle so that we'll get a positive area. If instead f of x is less than or equal to g of x, then you'll need to switch around your subtraction and take the integral of g of x minus f of x dx instead in order to get a positive area. One way to remember what to do is just to write the integral as the integral from a to b of the top y value minus the bottom y value dx. Remembering that you'll need to replace the top y value and the bottom y value with functions of x before you can integrate. Let's look at an example. We want to find the area between the curve y equals x squared plus x and y equals 3 minus x squared. x squared plus x is a parabola pointing upwards, so that must be the red curve here, while 3 minus x squared is a parabola pointing downwards, so that must be this blue curve. We know that area is given by the integral from our starting x value to our ending x value of our top y values minus our bottom y values, all integrated with respect to x. Our top y values are given by the equation 3 minus x squared, and our bottom y values are given by the equation x squared plus x. Now we still need to figure out the values of a and b, the bounds of integration. And from the graph, it looks like a should be maybe about negative one and a half, and b should be about one, since that's where the green area starts and ends in the horizontal direction. But to find exact values of a and b, the easiest thing to do is to set these two equations equal to each other and solve for x. So I'll set three minus x squared equal to x squared plus x. I can add x squared to both sides to get 2x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. This factors into 2x plus 3 and x minus 1, and therefore x has to equal negative 3 halves, and, or x equals 1, just like we thought from the graph. So we can finish doing our setup our bounds of integration are from negative 3 halves to 1, and I can simplify my integrand here. This is 3 minus x squared minus x squared minus x, or in other words, the integral from negative 3 halves to 1 of minus 2x squared minus x plus 3 dx. This integrates to minus 2x cubed over 3, minus x squared over 2 plus 3x, evaluated between 1 and negative 3 halves. Now I just need to plug in my bounds of integration and then simplify to get 125 24ths.
as the area. In this video, we saw that the area between two curves, in between the x values of a and b, can be given by the integral from a to b of the top y values minus the bottom y values dx, where the top y values and bottom y values are functions of x. More specifically, if the top curve is given by y equals f of x and the bottom curve is y equals g of x, then this integral is the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx.